Welcome to Season 2 of the Amani Experience Podcast. In this podcast, you will experience wisdom, advice, and stories from creatives all over the world. Your host is the award-winning Amani Roberts, who is a DJ, music producer, professor, voracious book reader, and skilled chef. On the show, we love to share the stories of creative professionals, especially people who have gone from the corporate life to the creative life. Once again, welcome to Season 2 of the Amani Experience Podcast. Welcome to Episode 75 of the Amani Experience Podcast. For this show, we're going to do something a little different. It's going to be the best of episode where we review some of my favorite clips from past episodes, some of the past 74 episodes, and share them with you. It's the holidays, so we haven't done any new interviews in a while. We'll, we'll get back to new interviews in the beginning of 2019. Um, but I had a lot of clips that I wanted to share, so I'm actually going to break it up into two episodes, and I hope you enjoy it. Remember, if you want to reach me, you can email me at podcast at amaniexperience.com. We just lost, launched a Patreon, which means that you can donate to the podcast for as little as $1 a month. Check the front page of the podcast website for details and a link, and I appreciate all the support. Let's get to our first clip, which is from Chris Pardall. Talks about how a professor that he that made a big impact on him advised him to take the right risks. Enjoy. Oh, Dr. Johnson. Um, I went to I went to St. Petersburg College, and in '95 I was cast in a, in a play, and it was my it was my first play, real play as an as an adult. Um, and there was uh, the teacher at the time was uh, uh, Carla Brantley. So of course the acting bug bit. It was an amazing experience. I had it was a it was a great part. I won some awards at the Florida Theater Conference. I thought, oh, I'm born to do this, and so I stayed in the theater department. Um, Carla Brantley left, and then Dr. Sybil Johnson came in '96, and she just was someone that had just so much love and compassion for people um beautiful big black woman with dreadlocks that i still can feel when hugging her and and i could still smell the nachamba on her um she really took she really took well she took an interest in everybody but she really She says, you know, she said so many things that today hit me so much more profoundly, retrospectively, and I wish they hit me back then. Yeah. Um, She was experimental. She, we, we did a musical once on this island and she, which is primarily, and and the, the musical is about dark skin black people on an island and the prejudice against lighter skinned black people yeah. on, you know, mm-hmm. on, on the island. And, um, and she cast white people in it, you know, and then black. So she okay. would always, you know, or we did, uh, Medea, we would do Greek tragedy, which I, which I loved, um, Medea or Antigone. And she did a civil war theme for Antigone. Nice. And it was just so thinking outside the box. So I had such a, a great taste of of what it's like to to not be set in what you think something is supposed to be, which is of course now huge. Right. You know, it's a it's a huge thing and people are it, it's really hard for them to break out of wait a minute, Thor is white, you know, and they can't think outside the box. Well, I experienced the opposite of that, where I was included in things that I might not have been in, in, included right. in uh, because of her. I told Chris before, and I'll tell him again now, that I'm going to find Dr. Johnson and share with him or share with her his original interview and this clip. I believe Chris made some progress in finding her. He sent me a note online, so I'm going to reach out to her. That was from episode 35. Next up, we have Crystal Washington from episode 10, and she talks about there is no one right way. 
21 year old me, I probably wouldn't want to change things too much. I'd be scared to skew things too much because it's what, you know, every decision I've made, even misconception has led me to where I am. But if there's one thing I could probably say is always go with your gut, always. And then part two of that is there's no one right way. Because I think a lot of times people are looking for what's the right way to create a contract? What's the right way to approach people about this? What's the right way to, and there's, very rarely an ultimate right way to do things. You just find your best way. And so I think just figuring that out, most adults, like 21's adult, but most adult adults, quote unquote, haven't figured that out. <laughs> so there's there's no perfect way to do things. There's your way and you figure out the best way to make it happen that's of service to other people. Wise words from Crystal right there. Next, we have Jamie Horgan from episode 15. She shares with us a couple thoughts. First, how pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. And then, especially now with the holidays, she talks about spending more time with your people. So take a listen to this and let me know what you think. It's funny because, and now that I remember, that same day, I had two different people ask me to do private lessons with them and I'm still working with them privately and so the universe very serendipitously brought into my life something that replaced that because I think at first it was like oh this is a source of income you know there was all different kinds of things going on in my head yes and so the more yoga I practice the more I am aware of if it's not coming from one place it's coming from another place so I started to look at okay well I don't have this finance coming in now, but I have this. And maybe I'm going to be more of a private teacher versus a public teacher. Who knows? Can I just let this be the path? Um, as far as letting it go, I think there's still some resentment. You know, I still feel because I, I indebted myself, but there's nothing vindictive about it. It's just like I can either let myself feel this and be in pain um, and suffer, but you know, pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. So I'm like, I choose just not to, yeah. to suffer. Great saying. My, my life is great. I have, you know, I make enough money for me to live and to eat and to do things that I enjoy. And that's enough for me. Um, so as far as letting go, it's just looking at what I have to be grateful for. You know, because it's really easy to be like, oh, I don't have this, this happened, that, this, this, this. But then there's this whole other list of stuff that I have in my life, my relationships, my, you know, the people that do value me as a teacher. And, you know, and I'm like, okay, I need to hold on to that. Right. And that helps me to let go of the stuff that, you know, feels painful. Something that's been coming up for me, and it may be because of all the loss I've had in my life, um, but it's just, I... I want to encourage people to spend more time with their people in their relationships and remind themselves that, you know, tomorrow is another day and it could, you could very, be, very well be the last. And I know it seems so dark, but it's not. It's um, to not sweat the small stuff in relationships. And that, that was hard for me. It was like, as a very sensitive person, I could take things personally, but something that has come up for me in this last year is just to enjoy the people and to really be grateful for who they are and to always just find gratitude in as many situations as you can. I appreciate Jamie and I really appreciate what she said there on both topics. Our journey now takes us to episode 33, Rohitash Rao, and he talks about how time gives you confidence. Uh, I think it was Andy Warhol who said, while everyone's trying to figure out what to do with the with the piece you just made work on the next one and i yes. think that i think about that a lot um if you're if you're working on the next thing you know you're already you've already separated yourself from the last thing and so if people go i think that sucks you're like okay but i'm working on this thing <laughs> and you may not think it sucks and honestly in the end like you know over time and i think you know over i think time gives you confidence hopefully um you don't care you really don't care you know i mean i didn't make it for you i made it for me this is this is me talking to me most of the time. I mean, I'm making fun of myself. I'm I'm the guy who I say, please uh, pretend I'm your phone and look at me. You know, I'm the guy who says uh, uh, that painting where it says uh, all the people you ignored today because you're too busy looking down at your phone. Like these are all things that I think about about myself. So these, you know, a lot of the work is just, you know, me making myself laugh and you know, kind of me realizing how, how I live. 
the fact that you hopefully like it or you know find um, you know some meaning into it, that's great. But really, um, you know. I'm really making this stuff just just for myself. Yeah, yeah. I like how you said time gives you confidence. That's that's a cool statement there. I agree as well. Let's continue with the theme of time, and we'll go to episode 17. Claire Schultz, she talks to us about how timing is everything. Timing. And I probably just learned that like last week. <laughs> so, All so, right, explain. Uh, timing is everything, whether it is a job, um, a relationship, a move. It is so hard to be patient with that. I am, I am famously not patient. So I'm, more, I'm working on that. Um, when we, I want, we all are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like I, when you want something, you go get it, right? You're like, this is what I want to do. And you, and you try to make it happen. But if there's a lot of things working against you, timing just isn't right. And you got to really be patient and wait for it. And that is so hard. Um, you know, even timing with my accident, like I was going to, you know, leave then and some plans that I had to, you know, do Pilates then timing wasn't right. Maybe I wasn't ready. Maybe I didn't have the client base. I don't know, but the timing wasn't right. Um, so just having to really trust that. I hate that phrase, trust the process, but you really have to trust the process. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Uh, you're cringing as you're saying. Hey, I am. I'm not like, happy. Yeah, I don't like that process. <laughs> I don't like that phrase. Uh, but yeah, it, you do. You have to. It's timing. It's timing. And it's so hard. I mean, seeing like even moving, uh, if you want to move out of the state, I thought about leaving LA at one point and I just, you know, for whatever reason, I did not. I didn't have a, it just wasn't right timing. And that's what it is, is you have right. to just wait. And, you know, you don't wait for things to happen. You work towards a goal, right? But when the timing is right, it'll happen. Just like when I left my job, the timing just happened to be right. And that's right. when I jumped. It was October 6th was my last day. So wow. two months. I can't help but laugh when, um, when Claire talks about trusting the process and cringing, because I feel the same way, but it's so true. So I feel your pain, Claire, but thanks for sharing. Next, we're going to talk to and hear from Colette Brandenburg, episode 40. So this one, I interviewed Colette, and we talked about the artist way. We're, with the clip you're going to hear, is she's talking about the artist way. And I hadn't been through the process yet. And then when I listened to her talk about the process, now that I finished it, shout out to V Torres, who we finished it um, this past summer, and it was amazing. The process had the almost the exact same tectonic shift, as Colette calls it, um, in the interview. It was amazing. So she talks about the artist way. I've completed it one time already. It was amazing. I'm going to do it again. I just really wanted to share this because it was quite prophetic, very true, and I highly recommend this book to anyone. I think it's going to be my number one favorite book for 2018. So let's listen to Colette talk about the artist way. That's a hard one. Okay. Um, I've been trying to push myself to go see other shows. I just saw Crystal Pite's work, um, Betroffenheit at the Broad, which was exceptional. Um, I did <laughs> last year. Last year I had a moment. I was really, I felt like the well was empty. Um, I do do my artist way date as often as possible. Good, if good. And I have an artist way buddy, Katie Loars. Good. Um, and so we reminded ourselves to like fill the well. But last year the well was very dry, and so um, I went back to Ireland and I saw Michael's new work, his Swan Lake, and it just reminded me of the transformative power of theater, of you know just. No, you don't have any rules when you're in the creative field. Like anything goes. Not not everything sells, but anything goes. And um, and then I like recently I was I was a little like oh man I gotta you know taxes and and then I went to see the Easter parade on the movie screen. I was like oh my god, rhinestones, <laughs> RuPaul wigs. You know I try and grab it from as many people and places as possible. But it is. It is a, a struggle sometimes, especially when you're in the business, business of making work because financially it's always good to just, you know, recycle your work. But, you know, artistically that's not always exciting. Right. So. 
It's not easy. And for the listeners who aren't familiar with the artist way, explain to them what that process involves. Ooh, the artist way. This is what I would recommend doing it. I, I was always very skeptical of the artist way. Have you done it? Yeah, I've, I know about it. I have not done it yet. Okay. So um, I was like, well, what is that? And, and, but people who I thought were really smart because they went to Harvard had done it. So I was like, well, if it's good enough for Harvard, I guess I can do it. <laughs> and so um, I was working at this bar in L.A., and my friend Katie um, we were talking about it and she's like, oh, I've done the artist way. Let's do it together. So I'm thinking, oh, we're going to read the book. So, so that was not the process that we did. I highly recommend this process. We would meet every week, once a week, um, at a coffee shop. We would read the chapter aloud to one another, which felt very awkward. Um, and then at, at the end of each chapter, there's tasks to do. And it talks a lot about God, which for, you know, it can put people off because it it's not necessarily, it doesn't mean it's about religion. You can substitute creative force, energy. So that can be a turnoff, but if you get through it, you're like, okay. And it's not an immediate transformation. It's just kind of like a tectonic shift where you don't necessarily know what's happening. You're not like, ding, lights on. It's just a slow shift. And now Katie has, at that time we were both working at the bar. Now Katie has a feature film company. I have a dance company. Like, you know, and, and you get an accountability partner, but it's just, it helps you uncover a lot of what what is happening. Why are you stuck? Yes. You know, it, yes. and it can be very far along in a creative career. It can be very early on in a creative career. And um, it's not always completely intuitive why it works. I have no idea why it works, but I just recently did it again Good. with a different person. Okay. And again, tectonic shift i don't know good word tectonic i like it tell us <laughs> keep going <laughs> yeah and so it, it and, the, and then usually the person i do it with i develop a really close friendship with because you have to be a bit vulnerable and yeah it's great i highly recommend it and it's 12 chapters you know yeah. it's like a 20 dollar book it's worth it she's right coletta's right it's worth it it's an inexpensive book highly recommend it we're going to continue on episode 54, Dina Brown, and she talks about why the fear of success is so common. What scares me, and I had a talk with um, my cousin the other day, success scares me sometimes. Mm, okay. And I don't take on certain projects. It's not a fear of failure. It's the responsibility of the success and that I know that everything I put my hands to, because God's already ordained it for me, is going to be great. But do I really want that responsibility and not weight on my shoulders? So that success means I'm going to have to continue and ante up. And I know who I am. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So when you understand the greatness and the largest thereof, that sense of success is actually scarier than the sense of failure. Yes, yes. That's, I think, the second or third most common fear is fear of success. Why do you feel that's the case? responsibility and and privacy and I call it like that commitment that I don't have a choice now I gotta show up I gotta show up it's not about me I gotta show up you can't hide I yeah. I'm an ambivert and that we tend to want to hide yes we like helping people and we're very gregarious we're outgoing but it can be very draining so then we like to go hide in our little shell but you can't hide when you have to when when everything is riding on you and you and it's your big scary dream because that's what touches you the most so that fear of success is that wow it is and now what's next and everybody's going to see my vulnerability what i what i hold most dear and then it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and i have to grow with it and change is hard and so it's really the fear of change such an interesting and personal perspective from dina i appreciate her words and she was dropping knowledge there love it Next, we're going to go back to episode 57. Over the summer at Camp Spinoff, I was able to do a quasi-live show with Z-Trip. He talks about how his race is with himself. Shout out to Z-Trip and Yulia for stopping by my class and speaking to both classes at Cal State Fullerton this semester. The kids loved it. I loved it as well. So thank you. And let's hear what Z-Trip has to say. I used to, I used to uh, you know, I used to take criticism um, a little harder uh, when I was younger because I wanted to I wanted to be the best I wanted to prove to everybody that I knew what I was doing and that I had my my you know had it together and that I think was a little more ego than it was anything else um, I look at criticism now as 
if it's constructive, I'll listen to it. If it's just bashing, I'll listen to it, but I'll also laugh it off because it's like, really, <laughs> who even cares what you have to say if you're going to come at me like that? Like, if you're going to tell me, like, if I, if, hey, man, you know what? You, you might want to try this or this, you know. But, you know, anyone who's like, oh, he's whack or whatever, like, <laughs> dude, go on YouTube, go on anywhere. Let's look at all the comments that people have. Some oh, of them yeah. are the dumbest, you know what I mean? Yeah. People can't spell, you know, when they're dissing you. It's like, whatever, man. You know what I mean? It, it's it's irrelevant to me. I I, uh, I used to I used to be concerned with it. Now nah, I don't care. I don't even care. My my race is not with them. My race is not to uh, to to try and keep up with the next man or or you know oh so and so got the cover of this or so and so put out this thing and he's got more likes. Fuck all that. Yeah. None of that matters to me. It really doesn't matter to me, and it shouldn't matter to you. And if you get caught up in that rat race of of being liked or being hated or or uh, how many likes or how many, it all that is is the wrong thing you should be paying attention to. You know what I mean? The experience is the thing. Uh, how do I better myself? My race is with myself. How do I better myself from yesterday? How do I evolve? How do I look back and go, man, I grew. Mentally, I grew. You know, musically, I grew. Um, you know, I, and here's the deal, man. You know, a lot of people projecting neg negativity and things, those are also a lot of people have problems and issues with themselves, and they don't really know how to focus the, the, the magnifying glass on themselves to figure out what it is that they're unhappy about. Because, you know, I'm a firm believer of if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all, because what's that going to do, you know? But if, if someone asks me my opinion, I'll, I'll try and be as brutally honest as I possibly can, but in a way that tries to give somebody like, yo, man, like, here's your, here's a different perspective. Try it this way. And that goes way further than you suck. That's whack. <laughs> Cause Agreed. that doesn't mean anything. Agreed. Yes. Yes. And more. Yes. Right there. I appreciate you sharing all that. Zach. That was, that was dope. We're going to go to episode 62 Latifa, who's sharing with us why you don't compare yourself to other people. What struck me about this is that Latifa is very young, and she's very young to know and understand this concept and how it can hurt you. So I just appreciated her wisdom for being such a young lady and wanted to share it with you. And she goes through, she explains how it personally affected her as well. So I just find that very revealing. And it's one of my favorite clips. Enjoy. Don't compare yourself mm. to other people. Um, I have done that constantly in my life um, and, and in different aspects. Like sometimes I'll compare myself. I think I would consider myself now better at this. I don't compare myself, but starting out, like I would compare myself with uh, my, like my idea is not as good as this established business's idea or, um, or even compare myself in a way where I'll see my friends who have regular like nine to five jobs in an office and I'll be like, wait, but I'm not doing that. Like I don't have, this like coworker network and, or I don't make as much as them or something like that. So then I compare myself and that always takes me, to, every time I do this, it literally takes me down a notch like for a week. And obviously like that's not helpful because I'm not getting anything done. Um, and I kind of have to talk myself out of it and I'm like, just get, get it together. Like you're doing just fine and not everyone is on the same path. Um, also, yeah, I mean, exactly what you said, creative professional. like. I'm creative in a different way than someone else. Like everyone can be creative in different ways. Um, so as long as you know you have your little niche or aspect to, that makes you a little bit different than someone else, like there's no reason to compare yourself. And then also with the with the side of comparing myself to my friends who have regular jobs, I have to like remind myself like I don't like that though. <laughs> like right. I'm not miserable though. Not saying that they are, but if I was in their position, I would be. <laughs> so yeah, I would say the number one thing is don't compare because that, I mean, that's gonna just kind of put a roadblock in you continuing and like pushing forward and you yeah. know coming up with new ideas even. So great answer. Since you've identified that and you continue to work on that, what advice would you have for people who still struggle with that? Like how do you maintain the limit limiting your comparison itis as we call it i think i have to a couple things so sometimes i have to step back from social media actually mm -hmm. and i mean that's with a lot of things in life like not even just comparing yourself when it comes to business like that's comparing yourself even the way you look but um i sometimes i have to step back from social media a bit or even like unfollow some some people or companies or whatnot that i that are that are super successful that I think like 
is almost like overshadowing me or something because that's not the case. But I mean, I have to do that. Um, and then I th sometimes I write down a list of kind of what makes if it's if it's dealing with my company, uh, dealing with the business, what makes the business different than other businesses. And then I'll look through I'll look at the profiles of like the companies that I think are competitors or that I'm comparing myself to. And I'll write down what they have and then I'll kind of look at this whole chart and be like, okay, well, I have like so many different reason. I have so many different reasons for people to want me than them. And they have reasons for people to want them, but it's not the way I want to do my business. Um, so I think kind of just, yeah, stepping back from social media, kind of doing a chart about why you're comparing yourself to, to these people or whatever, businesses, companies. Um, and then I would say meditating. Okay, all right. I don't know if that sounds really yeah. LA or, something or anything, but <laughs> a little, but it's but okay. <laughs> I love it. Um, not that I'm a pro, like this is a recent thing, but I get stressed and I get anxious very easily. And so I was just like, okay, let me just try something like other than a drug to, to kind of just try to calm myself down and get myself back together. And so, yeah, I, I've tried out kind of different studios in LA and there's one I really like in particular, but um, it's a great way to kind of just reflect and think about like why you're being this way. And, and it's just like every time I come out of a meditation class, I'm very positive. I'm very much like, wait, like I'm gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. I just spent an hour reflecting about why I'm gonna be fine. And then that lasts me for a while. And then the next time I'm freaking out, I'll go back, <laughs> I guess. Um, so yeah, I guess you kind of, you have to just pinpoint what you're doing. You know, if you just can keep preparing yourself and never stop to think about like, why am I comparing myself? Then nothing's gonna work. You kind of have to like get down to like the nitty gritty of like why you're doing this. Thank you, Latifa, for sharing that. I love it, love it. Our final clip for this episode comes from episode 63, Seku Andrews. And he asked a question that any creative that I know has asked themselves several times, both at the beginning, middle, even if it's towards the end of their career, he, he asked the question, do you want to make your art your commodity? And he goes through and he has a brilliant example and a story. He's a storyteller, of course, of how this all relates. So sit back and enjoy this one. And let me know what you think about this one as well. Purpose. First and foremost, know who you are, know why you're doing this, and know who um, who you're trying to serve, how you are trying to, how this will make your life and or the lives of others around you better. Because sometimes when everything else is peeled away, that's all you'll have to keep you going, you know? Um, <clears throat> and I have to pull on that in, the, in, those, in those, uh, those dismal times when I'm just <laughs> buried under it, I'm exhausted, I'm stressed, and, I, and you need, all the questions of why you're doing this come up and you have to have that answer why. Um, and, and, you know, coupled with that is passion. Like, find ways to keep that fire in you burning. You know, I used to, one of my ways used to be, I don't have, have as much time for it these days as I used to, but I used to try to make sure that whenever I was in a city for a speaking engagement, I would get to one of the local venues. Oh, nice. You know, so that I could just remind myself that, uh, you know, of my love for poetry, that this is what lit the fire, you know? Um, now I have to find it in other ways now that the demand is higher and my schedule's busier. Um, but yeah, purpose and passion first and foremost. Um, I would say third would be um, just pure tenacity, resilience, perseverance, perse persistence, any of the choose your, yes. choose your synonym. You know what I mean? Like right. <laughs> the yeah. thing that gets you to hold on when your fingers are trembling <laughs> yeah. and your grip is, you know, your grip is slipping. Um, I remember being in the studio recording one of my hip hop albums and uh, talking to the producer and the engineer about Lauren Hill and her success. And um, just, you know, I mean, she was such an anomaly, so conscious, so um, talented, such an incredible MC, such an incredible, like an MC that can go toe to toe with anybody, a singer that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any vocalist, a beauty that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any model. Uh, you know what I mean? Like just, and, and then all with a sense of consciousness and identity. And so we were like, how does someone like that make it in this, especially in this era of hip hop that's just the most misogynistic, like mm -hmm. just worst of the worst, right? 
And um, how does someone like that make it? And, and we were just saying it, it requires somebody that no matter how many doors are slammed in their face, they still walk into the next door and, and fight for her and pitch her. You know, like they believe in her enough that they do not accept no for an answer until they reach success. And I, while I thought that was amazing, the fact of the matter is if you are quitting your job and pursuing your passion and your dream, you have to be that person that believes in you that much to be able to keep going when those doors are slammed in your face. And then you also have to be self-aware because there are a lot of people that are horrible at something and they just keep going. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. And there's no self-awareness. Like we've all seen the first episode of American Idol. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> the first episode of the season. And it's just painful that nobody, really nobody told you you sound like that. So your mama just kept pushing you, baby. You sound good, baby. Go on and sing. Follow your dream, baby. You know what I mean? Right. And, and either nobody told you or you weren't listening. Yeah. And you weren't being real with yourself. So be real with yourself. Know your strengths. Know your weakness. Know thyself. You know, I would say those are some of the some of the main critical ones that get you through. Um, and then the last one I'll say is when I after I won nationals um, both times, I had I had uh, I had poets that won after me that called me up and was like, well, what do I do? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like how you, you've made a living at this. You seem to be doing all right. Like holler at your boy and <clears throat> I would tell him listen I could I could uh I could tell you the venues to call to book the best shows in New York or Nebraska I could tell you you know the way to sell your CD blah 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 but you can call anybody for that I'm not the only person doing that um there are people that may even be doing more successfully than I am the the most important thing that I could tell you is to sit down and have a real serious conversation with yourself and answering the question do you want to make your art your commodity because the minute you start to make you, you make that decision you you approach your art in a completely different way you have a completely different relationship with it it used to be that you wrote this poem because you were in love you know you wrote this poem because you had a breakup you know what i mean yes. now you got to get that phone bill poem out <laughs> You know what I mean? You got to write that rent poem. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's a completely different relationship and you need to decide if you're okay with that. And it's okay if you're not, but have the conversation. Um, there are, you know, one of the best examples I can think of of that in my life is, is when I released my second CD, Poetic License, uh, my second double CD of at least poetry. I had a few CDs of, of hip hop before that, but my second double most recent CD of, uh, called Poetic License on iTunes. Cop it. <laughs> love it. <laughs> Cop love it. it. Yes, we'll put the, uh, the, the link in the show notes. That's Keep right. going. <laughs> if you could see me, I'd be going at the link right here and pointing down to the bottom of the screen, right? We'll get some video of that too. <laughs> so, um, you know, I released that CD. It was, uh, love poems have always been some of my favorite to write and some of my be- and, uh, best pieces, some of my most well-received pieces. So I can I can sell and, and convert a room with my love pieces alone. And I had a CD filled with dope love poems, dude. <laughs> dope love poems. Right. For the love of my life that I had just proposed to. I was preparing my proposal uh, to her, I mean, right? And I'm preparing to propose to this woman. And in the middle of preparing the proposal, she breaks up with me. Oh. As I'm prepared, as I've got the ring on order, she breaks up with me. And as I'm releasing, do, signing the liner notes for the CD that's filled with poems about her, she breaks up with me. And so now I'm, you know, like I've just finished sending the liner notes to the to the manufacturer, like, and and to my girl. <laughs> Oh, no. Are you can feeling we, okay? Can we get a recall? Right. <laughs> like, Thanks for always being there. I can't wait to spend my life with you. This CD is for you, you know. And then and then the relationship ends. And so now, do you want to make your art your commodity? I have to go out and tour a CD filled with love poems about the girl that just broke my heart. Jeez. Oh, do you want to make your art your commodity? Um, and I had, you know, there were times that it got real rough. And then, of course, you know, I got over it. CD did well, et cetera, et cetera. But I say that to say... Um, what, even if it's not art, you know, there's there's a lot of times um, there's just there's a passion that we have. I want to I just love making muffins. I just love doing yoga. I just love, you know, fixing cars like whatever it is. There's a passion to it. And then there's somebody that says you should do that. I have a I have a piece called the next level that I did for 5000 small business owners at into his QuickBooks conference. And it, and it starts off me saying 
it starts off with poetry. You write poetry for somebody and somebody says, you should do that for me. We call those people girlfriends, you know, <laughs> and then you want to go do a so-and-so. And somebody says, you should make muffins for me. We call those people cousins. You know what I mean? And like, that's how it is. Right. And then all of a sudden you, you decide to take that leap and become this entrepreneur. But it started from a passion place. So you have to say, do I want to just keep doing this as a passion and make my money separately? Or do I want to mix the two? Because once I mix the two, yes, no going back. <laughs> it's a different beast. Yes. It's cool. a different beast. I hope you enjoyed the best of the Amani Experience podcast part one. Stay tuned for part two in the next week or so. And I will talk to you all soon. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Amani Experience podcast. You can check out the show notes on amaniexperience.com slash podcast. Feel free to email us at podcast at amaniexperience.com. Please remember to leave us a review on the platform you are listening on and share this podcast with anyone you feel would benefit from listening. See you soon on our next episode.